and sisters, we want to continue with our theme that we have been teaching, and that is greater victory. Our text is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture there is simple and clear. Number one, you can say clearly there that it is God who gives us victory. Point two, that this victory comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. Point three is that this victory is constant and continuous. You have been given. So it is said in present tense, but thanks be to God who gives us victory. So I want to make the point that I have made several times, that through Jesus Christ, God has given us victory in all areas of life. However, it is left for us to contend and receive and obtain and enjoy this victory. Praise the name of the Lord. And we listed so many areas of life and look at victory over and victory for, victory over and victory for. When you talk about the negative things, evil, then you talk about victory over evil. Hallelujah. And when you talk about positive things, then you talk about victory for. So just to list a few. We said that God has given us victory in all aspects of life, all areas of life, victory over sin, victory over ourselves, victory over the sickness and diseases, death, poverty, and all evil. And God has given us victory for righteousness, hallelujah, health, wisdom, prosperity, strength, eternal life, and all goodness of God, etc. Praise the name of the Lord. It is your decision, it is my decision. To be in God and to utilize all that God has provided, made available for us to obtain this victory and enjoy it. It is your decision. It is my decision. So it is a choice. As many people know and say, life is a choice. The Bible says very simply, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As the Bible says in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, that we looked at, he says that as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness. So the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will be lifted up that whoever believes in him should have eternal life. This is God's provision. Do you accept this blessing of God? And you know that song that says, look and live. We've been singing that song and we will continue to sing. Brothers and sisters, in this year 2021, let me emphasize it again. You need to abide in Christ Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. There is salvation in no other name. There is salvation in no other power. It is only in Jesus Christ. 
that you have eternal life, that God can save you. God will save you. Praise the name of the Lord. Having established that list of <clears throat> that list of areas that we can enjoy victory, and the fact there is a choice. We have thought deeply on one aspect, the aspect of divine health and healing. And I have made the point, and I want to make it clearly again, that God has made provision for you and me to live in this planet Earth in such a way that our bodies are no longer susceptible to sickness and disease. God has already made that provision. And we've looked at it in the old covenant, how the people live for 40 years. No sickness, even in the wilderness. No sickness, no disease. And they continue to live when they moved into the promised land under the old covenant that God gave to Moses. They live and they fulfill their days. No sickness, no disease. How much more in the new covenant of the blood of Jesus, that Jesus himself is the mediator of the new covenant and Jesus is alive. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Glory be to God. So, in this year 2021, my earnest desire and belief is that you and I will live in divine health. That our bodies will no longer be susceptible to any form of sickness or disease. In the mighty name of Jesus. That we will grow. You and I will grow in God. Grow in faith. To such an extent. That our bodies. Will no longer be susceptible. To any form of sickness. Or disease. If you agree with me. Let me hear you say a thunderous. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let that be your portion. Let that be my portion. In Jesus' mighty name. Greater victory. Today we want to look at victory over self. If you don't have victory over self, you will struggle to enjoy the other victories, the other blessings. No matter the covenant that you carry. And I want to show us this today. Because many of us are carrying so much baggage in our lives. And this is hindering us from enjoying the blessings of God. And you'll be wondering what is happening to me. Thank God who has helped us today. I believe, God, that as you hear this word today, you will make a change. Victory starts with you overcoming your own self. In fact, ourselves, in terms of our character and attitude, are such a limitation that sin is even a smaller thing. Why do I say that? You see, God says he will forgive us all our sins. So when we come to Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. When we come to Jesus and we ask for forgiveness of sin, he forgives us all our sins. By the reason of the covenant of the blood of Jesus, God said, I will be your father, and you will be my son and my daughter, and I will remember your sin and iniquity no more. That's God's word. So God forgives us our sin. But God expects us to walk on our attitude 
and character. This is where the problem lies, my brothers and sisters. You will see some people who say they have given their lives to Jesus and yet they are still stealing. No wonder you hear some people carry the title pastor and the next thing you would see is that they were involved in adultery and fornication. No wonder some people carry the title of born again. And if you enter into business with them, they will rip you bare because they have not dealt with their character and attitude. When people are like that, despite the covenant that is upon them, the blessing that is upon them, they struggle. Today, the Almighty God give us victory over every character and attitude that hinders us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say the Almighty God give you victory over every of your own character and attitude. Every of my own character and attitude that hinders me, that hinders you. In the mighty name of Jesus. We must overcome self. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. There is good acceptable and perfect will of God already for you. The Bible says very clearly, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to the expected end, to give you a hope and a future in some other translation. This is God's word. However, the Bible makes it clearly here that number one, we must be ready to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Holy, acceptable to God. And also, we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It is only when we do that, that we will be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? You want to enjoy the blessing. Make up your mind today to change. If you continue to do the same thing, you will get the same result. Unless you make up your mind to change, brothers and sisters, I am sorry to disappoint you. That is why many of you are jumping around prayer houses. Many of you are jumping around looking for a man of God to pour anointing oil on your head. Anointing oil is nothing. I am telling you the truth. It is not the Holy Spirit. Don't let anybody deceive you. The Holy Spirit of God has been given to humankind through Jesus Christ. If you come to Jesus, then ask God to give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you. That is the anointing. And that's what we're talking about here. When you make up your mind to change your way, change your evil way, change your deceit, change your lies, change your manipulation, change from being lazy. Some people are so lazy. God gave mankind walk to do and he has blessed the work of your hand psalm 1 verse 3 he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in the season whose leaf also 
shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever you do shall prosper. You've got to do something. You've got to walk. And God has blessed the work of your hand. And it takes hard work too to walk in the spirit of God. As we have said that in this year to enjoy greater victory, you have to walk closely with the Holy Spirit. We've already covered that. So let's focus on this thing. So I was making a comparison that sin, life of sin, God is responsible for forgiving us. So he forgives all our sins. However, it is your responsibility to change your character and attitude. And so the Bible here says, how do you do that? You make up your mind to change and you present yourself, your body as a living sacrifice to God. And say, this body, uh, it will be holy to thee. The lies and manipulation, I have been lying and deceiving people. I will no longer lie and be deceiving people. The laziness that I have been following, just want to be lazy and looking for a, 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 a handout. I'm looking for people who will just come and dash me something. That mentality has to change. It is not God's mentality. God's provision is that you walk and he will bless your hand, bless your walk, and make you prosperous. He will increase your band and enlarge you. Oh, so make up your mind to change. Make up your mind to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are the one who knows the garbage and baggage that you have put inside and have been carrying around. Forgive me, let me just make a little analogy because this discussion happened between me and my wife. I was telling her, I said, when, I, when you see certain situations in people's lives, it has a reason. But it's only God that knows. So I often say that thing. And there was a sister that we knew, or I knew her. I was the one who knew her a bit more. From a distance. Lovely looking from a distance. Has high beauty. And one day I had an encounter with this sister. And this sister displayed. And when she finished displaying, and I was just calm and looking at her, at the end, she looked at me and said, I am sorry, I'm sure you are very disappointed in me, knowing the way I am. I just told her, may God help you. So when I got back to my wife, I said, you see what I have been saying? See that lovely sister that we see? Or oh, I see, I talked about. Ah, the baby sister displayed. No wonder. So if this sister displays like this, brothers will take away. Men, uh, brothers will, will take off. Men will take off. Meanwhile, on first appearance, everyone will want to associate with this sister. Yet, he carried that character around. So I said, sister, you have to change your way. You can't. Brothers, you have to change your way. Now let's look at a typical example in the Bible. We are talking about greater victory. Hallelujah. Victory is provided for you already. But you must overcome self. You must have victory over yourself. You that once you have somebody partnering with you, all that is in your mind is how to cheat. You will not prosper with it too. That's not the victory that God. Because when you do that, how do you cry to God? 
The covenant is with you, no doubt, but how does the covenant work when there is a word working against you? I will show you briefly in the scripture. So very quickly, let's use the life of Jacob to look at this topic. Jacob, let's look at Genesis 25, 26 first. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of his source heel. So his name was called Jacob. His name was called what? Jacob. And you will see the meaning of Jacob as we read on. We have just read chapter 25, verse 26. So we go to chapter 27 and we will read from verse 32. Verse 32, please. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your first son, Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him. And indeed, he shall be blessed. Verse 34. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me also, O oh, my father. Verse 35. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. Let me make a point here that many of us like putting ourselves in the place of Esau here. And no, 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 no. You are a covenant child if you are in Christ Jesus. So you are never Esau. You are the carrier of the covenant through Jesus Christ. God has given us victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And so you are a type of Jacob. But now more than Jacob, you are a son of the living God, a daughter of the living God. The original Abrahamic covenant of blessing has been extended to you and me through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue reading. Verse 35. But he said, your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. Your brother came with deceit. This is who Jacob was. A supplanter. Deceiving people. There are many who are calling themselves pastors, born again, a Christian, whatever title, father, mother, a businessman, whatever name you're calling yourself, some a religious leaders, leaders of thought, and yet they are still full of deceit deceiving people. And by the way, the word of God says that in this year 2021, the emptier will empty the refuge of lies. So hear the word. So you will not say, I didn't warn you. The emptiers will empty the refuge of lies. And so come out of your life. Jesus has made the provision. He says, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. God is calling you to come into this everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. He said, I will be your father and you will be my son and be willing to, to be transformed. Let's continue. Ah, so the father said, yeah, but he said, your brother came with deceit. And has taken away your blessing. 36. And Esau said. Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me. These two times. A trickster. That's who Jacob was. Deceiver. And a trickster. Some of you think it is smartness. To trick people. To take what belongs to them. Today, repent. 
If you want greater victory in this year 2021, you must make up your mind to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you may know, receive, obtain what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. There is greater victory in God for you. Like what we have shared already that in God, you have been given already the right, the provision by the stripes of Jesus, by the word of God, that your body should no longer be susceptible to sickness and diseases. And by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you were healed. I was healed and we are healed now and we remain healed forever. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, Esau said, is he not rightly named Jacob? Jacob means a deceiver, a trickster, a supplanter. That is his identity, character. That's his character. He said, he took away my bad right, and now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not Reserve a blessing for me. See what happens when you deceive people. They cry to God. And so, their own cry to God and your own prayer. Make a, a choice by yourself which one God will answer. Because of time, let's quickly jump to uh, Genesis 32. So Jacob continued with this character struggle. He continued with this attitude of thinking that everything about life is to struggle and deceive and take by force from people. So in Genesis chapter 32, let's look at 22 to 31. It's a long read. He said, and he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed over the fort of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. You have to come to this place and look at yourself. Left alone. What does it mean? Reflect in your life. You know the attitude and character that does not conform to the way of God whom you profess to be serving. Today, reflect. Make up your mind to change. 24. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. 26, and he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Remember, Jacob carries heavy covenant upon his head, carries covenant of blessing. And yet Jacob here had to cry, say, bless me. Which blessing again was Jacob looking for? Because Jacob knew that something was wrong. Despite the kind of covenant that Jacob was carrying upon his head, he was always struggling. He would cheat people and he will be cheated. And you know, the Bible says in Psalm 18, verse 25 and 26, let's just stay with 26. God said to the pure, he says, I will be pure. And he said, but to the shrewd, <laughs> the one who says he is shrewd, he, he says he will also be shrewd to such a person. So that's what we're operating against Jacob. Despite all the covenant that Jacob carried. In fact, remember the blessing that was upon Jacob in Genesis chapter 27, verse 27 to 29, the father blessed him. He smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a few which the Lord has blessed. 
Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people starve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. Jacob carried that, yet he was struggling. In the house of Laban, he cheated Laban, and Laban cheated him back. Laban put a burden on him. He had to labor for seven years to get the wife that he loved. And after he labored for that seven years, instead of getting that wife, Laban cheated him too. Because there was a scripture operating against him. He said, to the forward, to the shrewd. You will also enjoy that shrewdness everywhere you enter, everywhere you go. So Laban cheated him, gave him another woman. And he said, ah, no, I don't want this one. He said, no, no, in our place, you have to keep. We add the other one, but you have to labor for another seven years. Jacob labored for 14 years to get the wife that he loved. So, Jacob wrestled here and said, God, you have to transform my life. That's the word. That's what Jacob was looking for here. This thing has to stop. I know I am carrying a covenant. I am a covenant carrier, but every time things happen on the opposite side. Are you that man? Are you that woman? That things are always happening on the negative side, despite your confession that you're a child of God, you're born again. Today, you have to make up your mind to change your character, your attitude, change your way by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. 27, so he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, ah, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Hallelujah. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Ooh. Look at 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For he said, I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. It is in this place of making yourself a living sacrifice that you will get the transformation. Make up your mind to change. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, do you see a man who excels in his work? That's New King James Version. And the original King James Version says, do you see a man diligent in his way? He will not stand before mean men, but he will stand before kings. He will stand on the podium. So that success you are looking for, just make up your mind to be diligent. This is just one example. There are many more examples. Success. Greater victory starts with a change of your character and attitude. And that is by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. According to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So I will read that scripture and we will close here. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. What is that reasonable service you're going to do in this year 2021? What is that change you're going to change like Jacob? God changed Jacob. And he had to remove his hip socket for him to limp so that he will remember that he is no longer Jacob, but Israel. He is a priest that is carrying a covenant. 
and he can no longer continue to be a supplanter. And of course, from that day, Jacob changed. Because you remember the story, even one of his sons or his children who revenged, you remember, Jacob even held that against them when he was blessing them. He held it against them that they killed somebody. Their, their anger was terrible. Change. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. Worldliness. Some people want to carry worldliness in one hand and enjoy the covenant of blessing in the other hand. It doesn't work that way. You have to say, I will no longer conform to this world. You can no longer be conforming to the rudiments and practices of this world. You have to make up your mind to change, to present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. You have to be ready to renew your mind. You have to be ready to change whatever character, attitude, behavior that is hindering your life, that is not helping you to succeed in life. I pray that the Almighty God, as you make up your mind now to change, will grant to you both the grace by His Spirit to change and the blessing of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. He will make that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God to be fulfilled in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. In case you're hearing me and you have made up your mind to change anything at all in your life, I want us to pray together. Open your mind and say, Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me and through your death and resurrection and ascension to heaven, where you sit at the right hand of the Father, having all power, authority, victory, dominion over all creations of God, I have received forgiveness of sin and I have received victory. Thank you for forgiving me all my sins, Heavenly Father. Right now, I change my character, my behavior in this area that has been hindering me. Mention that area. Those of you who have been practicing laziness, practicing worldliness, practicing all manner of things, cheating, deceit, tell God, Father, deliver me from the spirit of lies, of deceit, of cheating, of worldliness, of laziness. Deliver me, O God. From today, by your spirit quicken me. Help me. Let me do that which will glorify you. In this year 2021, Lord, by your spirit, I ask that my service to you, to humanity, will be your reasonable service. And help me to fulfill all your will and your purpose for my life. In this year 2021 and all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. The Almighty God fulfill His will and His purpose for your life. Today, this year, and all the days of your life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have agreed. The Almighty God bless you. The Almighty God make His face to shine upon you and give you peace. In this year, 2021, Enjoy greater victory. Fear not. As you abide in Christ, no evil will touch you. The name of the Lord is your strong tower, is our strong tower. We want to close it here. God Almighty bless you. Bye.